I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and behind me is a 1985 Ford Bronco. I did a video on this a few weeks ago. Today I'm going to go down to the local off-road grounds and see what this Bronco will do. The tires aren't that great and it's very warm today. It's supposed to be almost 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So all the snow is going to be melting and it could be pretty muddy out there. With these tires, I don't expect this truck to be that great. I also don't know if these are still open differentials on the front and back. If I get stuck, we'll find out which wheels spin. My last video left off with some problems with this truck, and I'll show you some of the improvements that I've made since then. First, you probably noticed that I took the hood scoop off. I just riveted a piece of sheet metal over the top there and painted it black. Doesn't look too bad. They had cut into the structure on the underside of the hood, so it's not worth trying to fix that correctly. A new hood for this truck is only $200. On the inside, I got rid of that terrible, terrible steering wheel and found one of the original wheels, put that on there. I also got some shift knobs for the shifters. And luckily, all the parts for the center console were in the truck sitting in the back. It's crazy that the person had gone so much trouble shoving cardboard and other things in there to hold the radio when all the stuff to do it was here in the truck. Underneath the hood, the problem with the carburetor was actually a very simple fix. The shaft for the plunger had become separated from the plunger cup. So just needed to take the carburetor apart, put those pieces back together, and just needed a couple gaskets to reassemble that. I did get a battery bracket to hold the battery down. This is uh, pretty much required if you're going off-roading. You don't want your battery flying around. And I did put a cutoff switch because I haven't looked into the electrical problems yet and there is a draw on the battery so I'll just open this unscrew this green knob a little bit that cuts power to the truck and it's ready to be stored this truck sat for so long I think the tires are no longer round because it sat with flat tires I know on at least the front tires uh, Maybe all the tires are not round anymore. A new set of tires will definitely do this truck some good, not only for traction, but for its road handling ability as well. One thing that's very apparent right away is this is a really big truck. Compared to the Land Rovers and things like that that I'm usually driving, this is very noticeably a much, much bigger truck. In fact, in fact this truck feels bigger than my Chevrolet Suburban. I made it down to the off-road park. The exhaust is actually not as loud as it seemed originally. When you're out on the highway and you're just cruising, it's not actually that loud. It's only when you're under uh, good acceleration that the Cherry Bomb exhaust is extremely loud on this truck. It was also a little cold because the rear window is still down. There's actually no motor in the tailgate. So the rear window is just sitting there on a two by four. If you look at the wheel behind me, this truck is equipped with freewheeling hubs. So I'll need to engage those before I go any further. I'm sure many of you are familiar with freewheeling hubs, but those who aren't, you need to rotate this from free to the lock position, and that will lock your axles so that they actually spin the hub. The reason you would want a device like this is so that when you're not in four wheel drive, the front wheels are not spinning the front axles, and that just takes a lot of wear, and it also makes the vehicle a lot more efficient. Nobody else is here yet get this unlocked while I wait for others to get here I want to test and see if the four wheel drive even works in this truck I'm going to do a burnout here in the snow and two wheel drive first and then see if it's different when I put in four wheel drive I have a feeling that maybe only one of my tires was spinning. So now let's put the transfer case into four wheel drive. You can see the four by four light is lit up now. Let's do the same thing and see if we have four wheel drive this time. Yeah, that was a lot different. I think it really is in four wheel drive won't be very good on my clutch if I leave it in four high, so let's put it into four low. Let's see, there is no 
other indications that you're in for a low. Now let's try moving again and see if we go slower, see if for a low works. I'm barely moving now. So looks like for low works as well. I've been curious if this truck had open differentials or not. So what I've done is I've driven up to this berm so that the truck cannot continue forward anymore. And you see that this side is spinning the rear wheel. But on this other side, the wheel's not spinning at all. So that means that this truck has an open differential. When the truck is in two wheel drive, it is actually only really one wheel drive when the going gets tough. And when it's in four wheel drive, it's actually only two wheel drive when the going gets tough. Only one of the front wheels is going to spin and only one of the rear wheels is going to spin. The solution to this would be to put in a limited slip differential, a spool, or weld the differential up. Having open differentials really takes away a lot of the off-road capabilities. If I were to upset the suspension of the truck and the truck was tilted a little bit, it could make this wheel very light and it would just be spinning like you see here. So if I want to make this truck any good off-road, I am definitely going to have to address this issue. Here comes the mobile camp to the party.
I think that was a great first test for the Bronco. Definitely need to get these tires changed if I wanted to perform any better. But I was actually impressed with the open differentials. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I didn't get stuck at all. If you want to see more videos on this Bronco, comment below and click subscribe.